Welcome to another episode of Digitex Craft Devlog. In this episode, I have finally started working on the sprite rendering, which is a 2D, gra 2D graphics, and I'll show you how to do some basic sprite rendering. As you can see, I've created this very simple platformer here. Uh, for the art assets, I've used the Mossy Cavern available from HIO. The link to it is going to be on, in the description of this video. Okay, so let's jump into the code or actually the graph itself. So we have this graph here. Uh, as you can see, it has all the basic elements, the UI rendering, the pipeline start, and I'll have the sprite shaders. This is available in the shaders. I moved some stuff from the pipeline to shaders we have here on the shaders at the moment. As you can see, uh, I have at the moment two Shaders defined, one for tiled and one for animated nodes. And if you take a look at the example here, tiled is the ground here. It's just a very, very long piece of tiled repeating uh, sprite. And for anim animation is the character itself. So let's take a look maybe first at the tiled. It's very, very simple. So we have the shader output where we output the position layer which is basically distance from camera which means that something that is more distance is going to be thrown underneath anything in front of it anchor which is the position of the sprite basically so let's say that you say that your sprite is approaching zero zero it doesn't mean left bottom corner as as, as it means in legend is by default it means wherever you decide to find the anchor so let's say you define the anchor at being 0 0.5 0 0.5 so the middle that's that's the that's that's the, that's the pixel that's gonna be in the in the zero zero coordinate and everything is gonna be relative to this and also any rotation is done around the anchor size is the size of the sprite and uh, color alpha and alpha trick is something that was available on the previous ones previous shaders as well so I don't think they needed more explaining so the tile rendering is very simple we have three properties the texture the repeat, so how many times this tile is going to be repeat in x direction and in one direction, y direction, and also offset, which means that which, which is the beginning pixel of the tile. So uh, let's say if I specify x.5, then the leftmost pixel of the rendered sprite is going to be from the middle of the the texture um i don't know, not know exactly how to better explain this so we have this two properties here and the property texture here we get the uv of the sprite we input into the v tiling and offset node with, with the tiling and offset specified and then we sample it the only thing for repeating you have to modify the texture settings to have repeat on U wrapping and V wrapping, otherwise it's not going to be repeating. It's going to be using the same pixel that's like on the leftmost. If you go to the left of the node or of the sprite or right, rightmost pixel. If you go to the right, so that's the tiled, very simple shader. And for animated, it's a bit more complicated. So we have once again animated texture. Animation start, which is the time when the animation has been started. Speed of the animation, which is uh, how many frames per second it's rendering. Animation looping, whether animation is looping or not. So let's say for a run animation, you want to have a looping animation because you want to be able to continuously run. As for example, for a jump animation or a falling animation, you do not know, want to, hit, to be looping because character has to do, I don't know, Bring up from from legs, and once it's in the air, you don't want to keep looping the springing up from the legs, so it's not going to be looping. For an example of non-looping animation, and the count of sprites in x and y direction in a, in a sprite sheet. So as an example here, let me jump into the code. I'll show you. I'm using this blue wizard idle, and it has this many different frames, and they are all in one big uh, texture. So. First, we have to determine which animation frame to show, and to do this, we take the time and the animation start. We subtract it, and we, this value is going to be after subtracting this two is going to be time since the animation has started. 
and we multiply it by animation speed, so how many frames per second, and then that's why we had which frame to show. We input it in the UV flipbook node, which is the, something that you use for flipbook animation like this with multiple uh, frames. But also you can use it for, for example, for particles, when you have particles uh, changing over time, let's say fire changes into a smoke or smoke becomes bigger or smaller. Um, we add the sprite UV, the properties, count and number of files and whether it's looping or not, and the texture, sample it and output it here. Okay. Um, as a result of this, we get this cute wizard running on the ground here and jumping. Uh, I hope you find this useful. Please consider subscribing and liking the video. Thanks for watching. Bye.